everyone, I'm Rob Lee, Program Director with the Climate Action Reserve, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Scoville Warming Potential, um, an interview series with hotter and hotter wings uh, to mirror our warming planet. Today I'm excited to welcome Robert Parkhurst, a carbon market expert, sustainability professional, climate policy thought leader, and most recently city council member for the city of Sierra Madre. <laughs> Robert, welcome to the show. Uh, I hope you're not too nervous about these wings are about to eat. Oh, I'm I'm scared. I'm <laughs> so scared. So here, right. let, let me. You you've done a very good job of laying yours out in front of you. I'll I'll, I'll share with you kind of my setup here. So okay. I'll try to do this slow so we don't get the camera shake. But down here on the desktop, I've got my wings. Um, and then let's see. Can we get to a picture of the? There are the hot there, sauces there, all lined yeah. up. Okay. And then over here to my right is my safety station. I've got, <laughs> my, uh, I've got all kinds of camera yeah. things. But there's my milk. I've got um, some uh, uh, donuts there. I've got some uh, white bread, uh, some potatoes. There's lemon juice and lime juice. So wow. okay. I've tried to get everything I can on this. <laughs> all right. Now let's see if we get this set back up. You're, you're ready. You're ready. Oh, and then, and then just, just to note for the audience here, uh, those that have been around the, the area for a while, I've got my my boxing glove up here from the as a climate action champion <laughs> somewhere along the line. Yeah, that's <laughs> some people notice like, that, some people don't. But back to you, Rob. Let's let's jump yeah. in. Yeah. All right. So the first one we're going to start with is the classic. So let's let's give this a shot. <clears throat> okay. Now, I'm going to do a shake with these. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's probably the right right call. I don't know. Like if, if the hot stuff settles to the bottom, you know. <laughs> they come down with you know, quick. Yeah. I just realized I'm going to have to, like, figure out my technique because I put that hot sauce straight on my tongue. <laughs> when it gets to the end, that might not be the right right strategy. Okay, that wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah. All right. So easy sauce, easy question. Uh, so Robert, you've been working in climate for, for a long time now. Uh, maybe we can go back to the beginning and, and really get to understand what, what motivated you to get involved in climate work. Sure. Well, it was an interesting opportunity. Um, so I started working in climate in about 2002. And this was when um, HP and Compaq merged. And I got um, asked to be part of the, uh, the corporate team. And as a part of that, um, I was looking at the sustainability strategy for the company. And there wasn't much on climate change. And so mm -hmm. I turned to my, my boss and I said, hey, can I work on climate change? And he's like, sure, go ahead. And um, I started digging into it and I helped HP create its first global inventory, its first set of greenhouse gas goals. And after that, I was hooked. And, and really that kind of started, you know, I, I looked at it and I said, okay, this is really interesting. And if I wanna make a difference in this, I need to, to search out somewhere else where they're doing bigger work on it. And that mm -hmm. led me through PG&E and EDF. And now I have my own consulting firm. So that's kind of how I got to where I am now. Great. All right. Ready for the next one? Jade Jaguar. All right. All right. Three drops on Here this one. <laughs> My pores are uh, a little heavy. I, have to I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay. That one tastes pretty good. Um, it's got a little bit of kick after it. <laughs> that just really, fr that, I'm, I'm really frightened for the, the later ones. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you mentioned your consulting firm. Um, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about what, what your organization is doing right now to address climate change. Sure. So Sierra View Solutions, um, it's 
a small consulting firm, and we focus on really the intersection between the environmental markets, agriculture, and policy. So my clients include nonprofits, uh, the, the government or government entities, as well as private companies. And so I'm working on exciting things like trying to find a um, feed additive for cows to reduce enteric methane mm -hmm. and working with um, the government on its potential strategy around the agriculture carbon market, um, as well as private companies in um, trying to, to get into new markets, such as the low carbon fuel standard. So it, it, it's a diversity of things. Uh, it's really exciting. And I, I'm just having the time of my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. We on to the third one now. That was a short yeah. answer. <laughs> no, no, that's. It's I'm gonna, fine. I'm gonna have to make longer answers so I've got time no, no, to meal. No. I know, right? I, uh, I studied the format of the the the, the first we feast, you know, interview series, and most interview series I feel like is kind of like a dialogue, but that one seems more like a Q and A session with each question. So I'm just gonna try and mirror that. This Let one's a know. lot thicker than the others. Yeah, I think this one might need to be shake, shaken up a little bit. All right. All right, I'm changing up my technique. I'm, I'm pouring it and then dipping. Pouring it onto my plate and then dipping. What is this? Mango chipotle habanero. Okay. That's got some bite to it. Okay. Three down, six to go. <laughs> Man. My mind is projecting forward. I know. I know, very... exactly. <laughs> I'm doing good so far. How about you? Are you doing right. all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I can handle this so far. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, so you mentioned a lot of the different uh, areas that you're working in. Do any of those in particular like come to mind as as some an emerging area that you're really excited about? You know, what what emerging climate effort are you really really jazzed about? I think that the one that that I'm most excited about is. Um, is the enteric fermentation mm. uh, and, and the reason why it's kind of there, there's a combination of things that are coming together on it uh, the first is is that um the additives that are out there they are um they can reduce anything from like 40 or 50 percent to up to 90 percent of methane so first wow. it's, it's, it's a big reduction yeah second methane is you know, it's it, it's the fastest growing greenhouse gas that we've got. I think that the numbers are that it's grown 250 times in the past decade. I'd have to look at the exact number, but it's it's grown grown substantially, much faster than fossil fuels. Um, and so, you know, it, it um, there's large potential to reduce. It's growing really fast, and it's got a huge impact. You know, it, mm -hmm. at at 25 times per 100 years, or 80 times per 25 years. It's a, it's a large uh, opportunity to reduce. Yeah. Um, it has a large impact. And then finally, when we look at, at, at places like here in California, where you and I are, and 25% um, of all methane emissions in the state come from enteric fermentation. Wow. Yeah, so half of all the methane emissions comes from the dairy sector, and half of that half, or 25%, come from the dairy sector. So if we can make a difference there, it could have, I mean, it, it could it could buy us a, a significant amount of time so that we can transition to a zero carbon uh, economy of the future. Well, that's that's incredible. Um, do do you think carbon markets are the right kind of avenue to to try and incentivize that that kind it's of great, behavior adoption? It's a great, excuse me, great follow up. Um, yeah, I do because if you think about it, so you've got this this additive you're you're putting into feed. So that's an additional cost that you're putting mm -hmm. in. So you've got to find a way to recoup that cost. And because you know the benefit you're getting is a climate uh, benefit, 
Well, it makes sense then that you use the environmental markets to help drive that benefit. So I, I think it. it's a natural fit. And, you know, there's a, a number of organizations that are starting to develop standards around this. Um, I think we're going to see more. Um, you know, the, the biggest challenge is, is, is it's, it's going to take time for these to get through the, the Food and Drug Administration, which is where they have Got to get it. it through. And yeah. so, you know, it's going, to, it's going to be an interesting collaboration between private businesses, government entities, including USDA, EPA, and uh, FDA. And so we get all the A's together and see if we can get <laughs> to, 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 to work together. So, yeah. you know, I, I hope I can be a part of that. Awesome. And that and the, the benefit of the additives, it's purely methane reduction. Is there any benefit to the, the health of the animals or anything like that? Boy, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, so uh, we don't know yet. That's the short okay. answer. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that we have it so that it doesn't have a negative impact. Right. Um, there's hope that many of these can have a positive impact. That's that's really interesting. Great. Yeah, we, we've we've heard a little bit about enteric and we've explored it internally. Um, so as, as that progresses, that's something we'll keep an eye on, too. Excellent. I look forward right. to guys on it. Yeah, yeah. We're hotter than L now. There we huh? go. Hotter than L. Ghost, Ghost sauce. sauce. OK, I don't like the sound of that. Shake well. Ghost sauce. <clears throat> I could feel my lips from the last one. The, the yeah, hell yeah. Okay. So far, so good, I think. That one wasn't, um, I'm going for a second dip on that one. Oh, bold. Some of these I might have regret- delayed. <laughs> yeah. I, well, that's how I was trying to, I was trying to give it a little bit of delay, but I want to get the full, I'm, I'm going for the full experience here, Rob. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. That's not bad. That's okay. not bad. Yeah. All right. Cool. So here's a fun one. Um, you're talking about cows. Uh, what's what what in your opinion? What's the scariest animal? <laughs> that's, that's actually an easy one. Okay. Um, so for, for for me, the scariest animal out there is the hippo. Okay. The hippo it can move pretty quickly on the land, but it moves very fast in the water. And anybody who has looked at or gone on a um, African safari, you look at it and they are just, they've got big jaws. So if they get a hold uh, of you or your boat, you, it, it's getting crunched. Um, <laughs> so for me, you know, I'll take, I, I, I've uh, I had a fortune of, of going to um, Tanzania a long oh, wow, time okay. ago. And, you know, we, we encountered lions and the lions were sitting there and, you know, they, they were just lying in the middle of the road. You know, and just yeah. just sacked out, and you know, no threat whatsoever. Um, the elephants would come charging towards us. We didn't go anywhere where there were any hippos. No, actually, we did see a couple of hippos, and and they were we kept them a long distance away. We just kept them, okay. you know. You guys can stay okay. over there. We'll stay here. So. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I wasn't familiar with the threat of hippos, but I I remember seeing a statistic somewhere about like the number of deaths caused by hippos is pretty pretty high yeah are we on to the are we yeah. going on to the next one yeah let's let's do it los calientes. los calientes all right i think we're i think we're entering the the, the hot zone here exactly mm. <clears throat> well, what's in this one yeah that's got some good flavor oh it's a delicious flavor yeah Red jalapenos and sweet apricot. Ah, that that it, it's uh, it's the jalapeno. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I am looking at. <laughs> Going back for for seconds again. No. <laughs> I, I ended that with the hotter than now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, maybe go back to some climate questions. What? What's your opinion on on the progress of climate policy and carbon markets? You know, that could be at any level, you know, state, federal, or international. Well, 
let's let let's because uh, because you brought it up mm-hmm. and I'm a city councilman. We, get, we let's start there. And we'll okay, work let's start at the city. Yeah, yeah. I would love to hear um, what Sierra so, Montre is doing. So, so one of the things that that I am excited about um, is that um, is the growth uh, of CCAs of Community Choice Aggregation mm-hmm. Organizations. And for anyone who doesn't know what those are, you know, basically they take over the the procurement of energy from the utility and then a bunch of cities typically get together and buy it. And so Sierra Madre is one of about 32 cities um, in uh, Los Angeles and Ventura County that's buying renewable energy. And so that's really exciting. And so that's that's one of the things I'm excited about. The other one related to that is this growth of, of, of building code and zero building uh, uh, non so we're, uh, we're starting to have new housing projects that don't have gas associated with them. And yeah. so they go into all electric. And so I've had a chance to talk with some of the folks um, that are working on this. You know, some people think of, of the stoves as kind of uh, the way Charlton Heston thinks of, of guns is that you can take my gas stove from my cold dead hands. Yeah, yeah. But it's changing. It's really changing. And many of the companies out there, you know, that's what they're, they're if you want the, the Tesla of stoves, it's going to be all electric. So, mm-hmm. so that's the local level. That's what I'm excited about. Um, you know, I, I, I am honored and, and lucky to live in California where you know, there is such progressive policies. I mean, we've got you know uh, goals to go to to zero emissions. Um, so it, that's really exciting and that's very ambitious. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing the thirty by thirty to preserve land, um, the initiatives to have um, all new cars sold in California twenty five as electric. That's yeah. really exciting. The federal level, you know, with the Biden administration, it's it's really really exciting. I mean. Every single agency has a climate leader in it. And yeah, so you know, yeah. a lot of my work I do with USDA and Robert Bonney has been appointed as the chief of staff. He's got a more bigger title, but the chief of staff in charge of climate. That's essentially yeah. what his job is. So I'm really hopeful on it. Um, you know, and then and then we'll just keep going and go to the, the international yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you see with the U.S. entering back into the Paris Accords, um, it would be really interesting to see what happens um, at the next COP meeting and, and where we go. Um, so that's all. I, I, I'm, I'm always optimistic on it. I, I'm, I'm scared, just like, you yeah. know, I am this guy here. Um, <laughs> but I'm also optimistic is, is to see where where things are going and where the opportunities are. It just seems to be more and more people that are dedicated and, and interested in getting involved in this. Yeah, that's that's absolutely the case, and I, I couldn't agree more. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Tears of the Sun. <laughs> I saw this, this name, and I just got scared. Tears of the Sun. That's terrifying. As I get to these later ones, I'm being careful of like kind of where I'm touching on things. Yeah, and... yeah. Don't rub your eyes. <clears throat> All right. Okay. That's got some heat. It is. Not too bad. Not too bad. Now I'm kind of. We got. We're like six in now. Yeah, I'm getting more and more confident. It's got a little bit afterwards. It's got a little bit hanging on afterwards. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're zipping right through this. Um, Okay, Um, so, Hmm. you know, given that we work in climate and, you know, the connection to the natural world is so important and really entwined in our work, I'd love to hear, you know, what's your favorite natural area or natural kind of landscape to spend time in? And if you had to choose one specific place to, to be for a week in nature, where would that be? So um, I'm a I love to backpack. It's one mm-hmm. of my favorite things to do. 
And I've been fortunate to, to backpack in a, in a lot of different places, a yeah. number in the U.S. I grew up backpacking here in California. Um, and, and, and I think that got my love uh, of, of the outdoors and um, love of, the, of our national parks. And so I, I've been to a large number of, of the national parks of everything from um, Haleakala and Hawaii all the mm -hmm. way down to um, uh, one of the reserves over in in um, in Florida and up to 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 uh, places in in uh, uh, um, the northern uh, uh, the northeast. But if I had to really pick, um, for me for me it's it's Yosemite. And yeah. It's Yosemite for for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, one is just it, it's got such diversity in it. Whether it is you're on the valley floor. Or you're going up to, to Glacier Point, or over to Wawona, or over to uh, Hetch Hetchy, just lots of different areas to explore. Um, and and my wife and I love national parks so much that we got married at Yosemite. And so, oh, wow. uh, so the picture kind of that's right there is is, uh -huh. is my wife and I. I think that's yeah, that's us just just below El Cap. Oh, that's and so tremendous. we had we wow. were fortunate to be able to get to get married there. Um, and so I just, you know, if I had to, to one place to go and spend a week, uh, it would be Yosemite and, uh, I'd probably, uh, start on the Valley floor and, and go up, um, uh, past Vernal, um, uh, and Nevada falls and yeah. just continue off in, into the back country. Um, you know, do one of the circles around there. Um, I did part of the John Muir trail back in 2017. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a phenomenal experience and, um, so I hope to be able to do other parts of it and then to come into Yosemite Valley in the future, so. Wow. Yeah, that would, that would be amazing. I didn't even know you could get married at a national park. You can, you can, wow. yeah. There's, there's, there's actually, there's a, a little chapel on the floor um, and we got married in the, the, the tiny little chapel. Um, and um, then we had our, our reception, we had it at, we were able to get it at the Iwani. And, and the Iwani is just, you know, the, the lodges in the national parks are incredible. And the Iwani itself is just is just fantastic. And so, um, yeah, we had a reception there. Um, the, on, the only downside, it's a small downside, mm -hmm. is that if you if you have your reception at, at, at the Iwani, it, it, you got to close down at 9 p.m. at night. So we can't go uh, on. At night. But, um, you know, I don't know how that was for the guests. Um, but it, worked, <laughs> it, it worked for my wife and me. So hey, that's, I mean, that, that sounds incredible. Wow. All yep. right. <clears throat> so you ready for the honey badger? Nope. <laughs> yeah. This, this last one has a, a lingering heat. It does, but it's not, yeah. you know, I'm, I, I'm so far. I haven't had to go for the uh, safety table. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see these last three. I know. I think these are the ones that. Yeah, we'll see. The, the honey badger, we'll see if we give a dang. Yeah, yeah. how would the uh, honey badger compare to a hippo? You know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I may, be, I, I may be regretting this. I put a a, 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 a good dose on this one. All right. That's, we'll I think see. that's the strategy here, is they get you confident and then knock you out. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> wow. <coughs> oh. That's that's hot. That's got some lingering. Yeah. Oh yeah. Honey mustard spice. Never never really had that flavor. Yeah, the okay. honey mustard spice. Oh, <laughs> how you doing rob yeah yeah doing all right well uh that does not bode well for these last two um okay <laughs> so robert uh what's 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 your favorite action movie my favorite action movie oh yeah so uh i don't have one in particular okay, okay. but i have i have, I have one actor and oh so so my favorite 
Um, oh, pardon me. I'm just making sure. I'm, <laughs> making sure I'm not touching my face. Um, yeah. I love Jackie Chan. So amazing. You know, I was gonna just, say my favorite my favorite movie is Rumble in the Bronx. So okay, okay. <laughs> my favorite action movie. What he is able to do mm-hmm. is just incredible. I mean, it just you, you and he's got a great sense of humor in it, um, and just you know, it, the physical prowess of that man yeah. is is unbelievable. So it's this great kind of action and comedy at the same time. So. Um, I think maybe in recovery of this, I might have to go watch one. Yeah. This is this is sticking around. Yeah, that's a lingering heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any uh, any favorite Jackie Chan or? Um, you know, I, I I like I like Shanghai Noon. Okay. Um, and I like the Tuxedo. Those are kind of the two. Yeah. That yeah. That, that that I like quite a bit. Um, yeah. Make they don't make. Uh, they don't make action movies like that anymore. <clears throat> there's yeah. a uh, there's a YouTube video uh, about Jackie Chan, and I recommend everyone watch this video. It's uh, every frame of painting, Jackie Chan, and it kind of breaks down in detail why Jackie Chan's like choreography and like humor is so so unmatched in in the action space. Highly recommend that video. Very cool. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah it's I, I, yeah. It, as if you don't need to. As if you need to know it. I mean, you see them doing it. But I think I think mm-hmm. if, if they broke it down, it would give you another level of yeah of, of appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm I'm going for a donut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my lips yeah. are burning a little bit. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. I think I think I read before that he's broken every single bot bone in his body at least once. So. That's a man dedicated to his craft. It is. Oh. All right. Do we need a break here before we dive into the eye of the scorpion, or you want to jump right into it? Oh, this this heat is coming right back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm now going for the, the 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 toothpicks. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the toothpick on this. Okay. All right. All right. I have a scorpion. <clears throat> oh, that smells strong. Okay. Wait, wait, what's in this one? Do we know? I have a scorpion. A scorpion pepper. I have never ah. heard of a scorpion pepper. Yes. Oh, that is dangerous. I've got it on my fingers, so. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Do not. Directly inhale the, the yeah. Well, see on 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 these wings, it's it's not been too bad. Oh. Oh, that's awful. <clears throat> oh. You okay, Rob? Yeah. Maybe I should have gone with the toothpick, too. I feel like I'm failing as an interviewer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. All right. So, Robert... um, What's the uh, what's the most used app on your phone? Oh man, this is bad news. Yeah. So for me, the most used app is Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Well, yeah. probably probably followed by my email. Yeah. Kind of kind of a toss up between the two, but yeah, I'm uh, you know if I want to figure out what's going on. I typically use Twitter to help me kind of dive into the news, like try to yeah. figure out kind of what are the things. Cause, because after a while, you know, um, Jack Dorsey knows more about me than anyone should. <laughs> and, and so, you know, they're serving up what I want. And so, um, oh, that's, that's, it, that's, that's starting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm mm-hmm. feeling this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so, so it allows me to kind of dive in and then, and then I'll go to the sources, get, you know, I'll go to the New York Times or the Washington Post or Wall Street Journal and, yeah. and then go and, and read the articles there. And it helps me kind of really hone in on things. And then, it, you know, in particular, it allows me to get into some of the ones in our discipline to try mm-hmm. to find those things. And so, um, you know, and, 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 and now I'm thinking about this. Probably as much of, of Twitter, I use the um, – I have an iPhone, and, and I use the podcast. And I listen to podcasts yeah. all the time, so yeah. especially as, like, you know, when I'm doing dishes or taking a dog for a walk or mm-hmm. folding laundry or out in the garden, whatever it is. I've got a podcast going. And so um, that's kind of – that's 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 probably my more more productive because I can, I can multitask with that. Yeah, yeah. I think those two are the same here. What's what are your uh, what are your go-to podcasts? My go-to podcast. Well, so um, I'm a big NPR listener. Okay. Uh, so um, I've got uh, I, I listen to the NPR Politics podcast, um, and I listen to um, Science Friday. Uh huh. Um, there's one. Um, oh man, that's coming back back for later. <laughs> Yeah, I got stung. It's, um, it's this is this one lingers. There there is one um, that is uh, oh god it's Anna Westervelt <laughs> and oh what is uh, that one that she does? So so there's there's how to save a planet and there's hot mm-hmm. takes mm-hmm. Uh, and you know th- some of those are, those are pushing me. I tend to be more of a middle of the road person, and then those kind of push me. To, to see, you know, what what more progressive people are doing. Yeah. And, then, and then finally, finally, it's wait, wait, don't tell me. <laughs> so, you know, every Saturday, it's about about 10 a.m., you know, that mm-hmm. drops and I'll listen to that. And mm-hmm. and so I have I, I have a, a love of the show, but I also have a personal connection to it because oh, in, in um, November of 2020, my wife got me wait wait don't tell me for my birthday and I was a contestant on the show. Were you? And I and I won and so I had uh, somewhere around there's a tape there's a cassette tape that's how yeah. old it's been how long it's uh-huh. been um, that has Carl Castle's voice on it for for our voicemail. For your voicemail, that's yep. incredible. Wow. Do, do you use it as your voicemail recording? I you know what I have to go find it. It's somewhere. <laughs> I, I knew exactly where it was before I, I, yeah. the last move. And now, now I don't. So. All right, that's uh, this is a challenge to everyone to to hunt down the episode of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me that Robert Parkhurst was on. Well, the problem is, is that. So. I this will be. This is a challenge. If you can get it, it was the first Friday in November of 2000, and at one point it was online. Yeah. Uh, but it's not there anymore. It's been archived, and so if anybody can find it yeah. and send it to me, I was like um, the second contestant that answered three questions. So I wasn't the opening. Wow. Guy. Okay. And, it, and and the show was was being live taped in um, in New Hampshire. Okay. So that that you can you can find the show that way, but but we ha- I haven't been able to find the recording on it. So. All right. Someone write to NPR and let's get this. Let's track this thing down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All okay, right, so now I've got, I've got donut on my hand. And I'm afraid no, I'm not going to lick it off. I do that, I might regret it. Yeah. All right. Time for the last dab. You ready for this? Nope. All not right. in the light. <clears throat> Okay. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll get the question out before I try this. <laughs> so, before we bite into this, so that you can think about it. Final question. You get to listen to one song for the rest of your life. Oh yeah. What is it? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna answer one of the questions you didn't ask in relation okay. to this. Okay. Um. I have to get some of this on here, though. So. Yeah. All right. 
There we go. Oh. <clears throat> oh. How you doing, Rob? My lips are on fire, but I didn't even touch the sauce to my lips. <laughs> Pardon the noises in the background. I was trying to get, get rid of them, and then they just got more. Okay. I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to do another dab on this one. Just do a little. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta get, get, get the full experience. If, if we're going to do this, like I said, yeah. I'm doing this once. Yeah. All right. This toothpick technique, I'm liking. Yeah, I probably should have gone with the toothpick. Okay. Wow. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I was gonna say you you got an iron uh, stomach for for spice over there. Well, so 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 we're going off script here, but yeah. um, so when I was a, a senior in college, uh, <clears throat> my roommate was uh, was Indian, uh-huh. and uh, I uh, I hadn't had a lot of Indian food. Mm-hmm. We we uh, was in Chicago. I went to Northwestern, and uh, he's like, you know, let's let's go have some Indian food. Yeah. And so we went down to Devon Street. Devon Street, you know, it's where all the, the authentic Indian restaurants were. And as we were walking mm-hmm. down there, he's like, all right, do you want to go, like, Americanized Indian? Or you want to go, like, <laughs> you know, full Southern Indian? Indian. Like, do you want to yeah, go yeah. for the, the yeah. you know, the, the, the hot stuff? I'm like, you know, if I'm going to have Indian, let's go, let's go all the way. Oh, so boy. we went there. And, oh, boy. Um, I wasn't as, as tolerant of, of spices as I am now. I'm feeling this one more now. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna go for. I'm going for the, the another dab on this one. Okay. Um, and and I had I, I had a personal waiter that night because he just yeah. you know there, there wasn't a lot of we, we should have ordered more non, um, but uh, <laughs> he uh, uh, he had just keep had to keep coming back and filling up my my water glass. Yeah. 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 I would. I'll say uh, Indian uh, spice is a different a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. If you're not prepared for it. Yep. So, all right. So here's the thing. So, one of the questions you had in preparation for this is, mm-hmm. who I look up to, or who kind of yep. I, I admire in this. Mm-hmm. And my person I really admire is the late um, Stephen Schneider. Stephen Schneider was uh, was a um, scientist at Stanford, and in addition to being really a really smart scientist. He was one of the best scientific communicators that I know. And um, he, you know, I was on a, I was on a, a committee with him. I, and, um, you know, he was, he was just so thoughtful and so kind. And so I started to get to know him um, and kind of um, try to, try to, 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 to use him and use his knowledge and help impart that on. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, I'm feeling that in the lips now. Yep. Um, and so I, I really got got to know him, and and he um, he had been invited to go to a rock concert. Yeah. <clears throat> to, to to a rock festival, and this was the um, the Rothbury Festival in um, in in Michigan, and um, and so part of the idea was was to try to have this music festival and to have to talk about subjects um, that would be interesting to the people that were there. And as we were trying to bring in, you know, people that were that were and it was largely environmental issues yeah. and try to get them 
to, to talk to the people going to the concert. It was a really, really interesting idea. Yeah, that's really, um, really cool. So I got to go there. I got a chance to go backstage, was in kind of some of the, the behind the scenes stuff, which was just a rare, rare um, opportunity. And, and, and it was there that, that I got to, to see from backstage, I got to see Michael Fronti. Uh, and you know, the, he has just got such a, a positive attitude towards life. Um, just kind of really catchy music. Yeah. Just a, a, a good soul of a person. And, and so um, for about the past 10 or 11 years, um, that the song to which I wake up to it, it is, it is, uh, what is it? It's every day. Uh, Life is better with you. The acoustic version. Um, so here we, let's see, let's see if we can actually, um, uh, go out on that one. Um, I love it. So yeah. So if, if I had to do it and, and, and you know, there's, there's times in my life where I've kind of gone through, um, artists, like, you know, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll listen to someone for a number of years and then yeah. it just wears on me. This yeah. is one that has has stuck with me for for many 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 years, um, and so um, I just you know I really I, I've really enjoyed it, and so um, I, you know I honestly I hope I don't get tired of it um, because it is it's just such a a um, a positive and, and good and good song. So here we go. Let's just play this out. Let's see. Let's do it. So there we go. Now, the other, one of my, my final life missions. Is to learn just to play that riff. I'm a horrible awesome. musician. Yeah. My son is fantastic. And I want him to teach me how to play that on the guitar. That's so. tremendous. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a musician myself, but. <clears throat> There are definitely certain certain songs, certain riffs that just stick with you and yeah. things that you want to learn. Yeah. Well, Robert, you survived. We've survived. I appreciate you sticking this out. I went back for a second uh, bite of the la that last dab as you did, and I'm regretting it now. <laughs> <laughs> Runny nose and. Yep. My, All right. my eyes are so, watering. So, so this is this is the last part that, that I that I talked about at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so you can keep it or you can cut it. So if, if you're going to continue to do this and go on with it, um, you know, I, I I'm thinking of the Scoville warming challenge a little bit like the the ice or the Scoville Scoville warming potential challenge, a little bit like the ice bucket challenge. So should yeah, you choose to do this, um, I would like to challenge Alistair Handley. The radical at radical to do the Scoville one <laughs> potential challenge. All right, Alistair, you heard the man. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate it, Robert. It was a great time. You survived. And uh, to everyone watching, I hope you all have a great uh, NECW. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. You have a great one. All right. You Take too. Care. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.